Hey guys, welcome back to Adventure Camp and Tactical Nut here. And today we're back out at Uwari. Just wanted to get a day out in the woods since it's been a little while. Um, as you can see here, I have the Ciroc hammock that I got in my Karen box I'm going to be testing out. It's got a lot of blades to test out. One of those being the Clyde Chalinor Custom. I've already been using a little bit to carve some tent stakes and stuff uh, to stake out the hammock. Um, but just want to get in a short hike today, maybe do a little shooting if I can find me a nice little spot. But uh, come along, hope you enjoy it, and we'll get So, in case you are curious, I have kind of decided that I'm going to stop wearing hiking boots. Um, except for in the winter when it's really cold, or if the odd chance it snows or something like that. Because um, I want to go more towards the almost barefoot style. Uh, I'm going to be ordering some sandals called Z-Trails at the end of the month. And uh, it's supposed to be walk, uh, just like walking barefoot, although it gives you protection for the bottom of your feet, uh, made by a company called Zero Shoes. Um, so right now, in order to prep myself a little bit, I'm kind of going to go back to wearing these Merrells, the barefoot. These are just about four years old, and they're really good. Um, I've just kind of really worn them down a lot, uh, so I need something different. But I'm um, really curious to see how that goes because, you know, as they say, it's actually bad for your feet to wear shoes because you're, you know, if you have thicker soles like most boots and tennis shoes and stuff do, you're standing on an incline, which is bad for your body. And it also causes you to strike downhill first really hard, which that shock then goes through your body. So it's bad for your knees, your back, all that kind of stuff. Um, so I'm really curious. To see if that helps with my knees because my knees are not awesome by any stretch of the imagination and i just want to see overall does it help be able to hike and do other sports activities longer because when your body's walking properly as in toe first your body acts as its own natural shock absorber and that's why you see a lot of those uh ultra endurance athletes like matt graham and then people that uh living cultures where they don't wear shoes and they can run for these crazy long distances and a lot of that is simply just because they're barefoot uh, now I know almost everywhere you go you can't be barefoot so that's kind of why I want to get the sandals because it'll be the closest thing to it plus two as you can see here when I'm hiking around this is what most of the terrain looks like so being completely barefoot would have to be pretty painful but it's just a, an experiment I'm going to try. I think it will do really well um, because they all, Zero Shoes also offers a canvas shoe and then like a, a tennis shoe style shoe for those that want more coverage over their feet. So if they actually do really well, then I'll get those and I can wear those to work. But it'll still maintain the same thing as always basically like being barefoot all right just in case you were curious because i also want to let you know i'll be reviewing the shoes once i've worn them for a while and see how they go because they do come with a 5,000 mile warranty and that's pretty awesome all right guys let's get some more miles in
Alright, <clears throat> been hiking for several hours now. It's been a gorgeous day. Uh, most of it has been like this in the shade, so the heat hasn't been too bad. Um, if it's anything like yesterday, it's probably in the mid to upper 90s. But at least here in the shade, it is not bad at all. So that's always kind of nice. Um, but yeah, it's been a really, really nice time. The Merrells are doing quite well. I haven't worn them in a while because they were getting old and kind of worn out. But I'll tell you, you can definitely feel the difference between I can win a shoes like these that are basically supposed to be like your barefoot and sorry big thing of mud here um but the difference between that and uh obviously hiking with hiking boots on because with this these you definitely feel every rock and root that's for sure so you i find myself watching the ground more than looking around um simply because you gotta be a little bit more picky about where you put your feet so but the more I do this with these on the more I'll start to condition my feet to you know the feet muscle gets stronger ankles calves stuff like that because you're working muscles that you normally wouldn't um, so over time that'll get better and I'm looking forward to that it's always the initial training stage that always sucks right with just about anything so, but this place has been completely empty. Saw some people at the parking lot. Uh, two guys and one of them's son. Really nice people. Live in the same town I do. So that was kind of cool. Um, uh, yeah. Another stream. Been several of these. I always love these. Well, I don't have to worry about them much when I'm wearing waterproof boots. But. It's just such a peaceful sound. These are great places to camp. Where the water's still moving. So if you need any, you can boil or filter it. And then of course, just to fall asleep listening to it. All right guys, if I come across anything a bit more exciting. Sounds like something running over there. It's extremely rare to ever see deer around here, so. Which is sad. You'd think in a national forest. One, that there would be a lot more signs. And two, a lot more variety of wild, wildlife. I know I complain about it every time I come out here. You see a couple of squirrels every now and then. And birds. That's about it. Oh. Alright, if anything more exciting happens, I will bring you back along. I guess we gotta call it snack time now. I'm gonna eat my cliff bar I got from my Karen box. Protein or peanut butter and chocolate. Two of the best flavors ever invented and combined. It's trying to get the best way. Figured I'm stop down here by one of the creeks. And the campsite where maybe they tried to leave no trace. But in case you haven't thought about it, metal doesn't burn. So you can't burn that trash. So I gotta say this shirt about Arctic Cool. These things rock. They actually work as advertised. They actually do keep your body cooler whatever's under the shirt. Very impressed. Highly recommended. Um, when I got them, they were 30 bucks a piece. The last time I looked, they were on sale for 20. So for 20, definitely worth it. 30 is worth it. 20, you gotta jump all over it. Definitely worth that. Alright, 
I'm gonna finish this up and get back walking. All right, so not too far away from the campsite. Been hiking for about four and a half hours. It's been a really good day. So peaceful out here. Haven't seen any people except in the parking lot. And just been listening to the sounds of nature, the birds, squirrels running around. <laughs> and have really enjoyed it. Now I'm gonna get back to the campsite. Got a lot of different blades I need to test out. Can't wait to show you some of those. And I gotta eat. I'm really hungry right now. All right. See you back in a bit. All right, so two things. One, remember how I said I very rarely ever see any deer out here or any signs of any deer or any other animal? Just had a huge doe and her fawn take off that way. They were standing right up here at the edge of this road right here. That was kind of nice. And number two, remember how I said when I was almost back at camp? That was 45 minutes ago. <laughs> I thought I was closer than I was. But I set out, I was only going to do about a three or maybe three and a half hour hike. I just wanted to get about 10 miles in. So that way I could get back to the campsite and start processing firewood, you know, testing out a few different knives and things. Uh, but it took a different trail. And so now, looking at a little bit over five hours. And I really don't feel like processing firewood right now. But I'm going to have to if I want to eat because i got to cook. <sighs> so what happens when you don't bring your backup stove so that you could just fire that gas right up and eat in a few minutes oh well still an awesome day see you at camp all right so just to get back to camp i sit back to relax and i hear thunder then it drizzled for a minute uh, so, wood processing may not be in my future. Um, I don't know if you can hear that thunder off in the distance. Hopefully it's just passing by. And not going to stick around, but I'll give it a little bit and see. If not, I'm just going to kick back and relax under here. I raised up one side, a lot further out, mostly just to get more airflow in case it stayed really hot. But uh, it'll just give me some extra space if it rains, and I can still sit under here and relax and be dry. All right, well, I'll let you see, blah, blah, let you know how it goes. I gotta admit, I am pretty freaking tired. Um, just got done chopping some wood, courtesy of the new cold steel Warhawk. This is the first time I've taken it out, and I gotta say. This thing is a chopping demon. Uh, I mean, it was breezing right through the logs I had. We was using to start to get the fire ready. Um, hopefully you'll see right here. Oops, sorry about the camera, sorry. Still loving the upside down, upside down fire. So I'm probably gonna be using that for a while. And, uh, and later, I'm not gonna start the fire right now simply because I don't want to go have to cut more wood. I have a little here as spare to throw on if I need it. But uh, what I'm going to be using is more pine fire, right? I think these are the fire tots, maybe a micro tot. I can't remember, I forgot to look at the name of it before I left. Um, so I'll show you a little bit later when I actually do get it done. And of course, what I've been using for a while now is my four directions uh, four Directions Bushcraft uh, Fire Steel, and then of course the Fire Striker that I made. Um, and I got a Fire Steel from Pine Fire, uh, but I forgot it. <laughs> I sat it in a different bag of a, a different type of fire starter that I got from them, and uh, yeah, ended up picking up this one and forgetting to grab the bag. So 
I'll be using the Four Directions Bushcraft one, but I love that one. I mean, it works amazing. Uh, of course, I have no doubts that the Pine Fire one will, uh, no doubts that it will work. <laughs> Sorry, I am getting tired. Uh, all right, I'm going to kick back and relax, and yes, I'm going to go ahead and admit it. I cheated on the food. Um, I was so tired when I got back, and it kept the thunder kept rolling in. Um, I was pretty convinced it was going to rain because it was getting pretty dark. Uh, and this campground is about a mile and a half off the road. So I drove that mile and a half and then about another mile to a gas station that's nearby that has a little restaurant in it. So I got me a hot dog and fries and a frosty cold Bud Light. <laughs> so yeah, I was just too tired to come back and cut wood any sooner and cook because that's the only way I could have made food was to start a fire. And I don't want to do it all that early. All right, guys, I will bring you back. Uh, in case you hadn't been, haven't seen, this is what's going to be going on later. I'll just be the last thing. This uh, white thing hanging right there. This will be the rope light that I just reviewed recently. Um, I'm going to bring out the third one and pop it up uh, to tie off and be able to sit in a colorful environment this evening and uh, look through a catalog that I brought that I got from Jasmine's military shop but I need to start looking at more gear to get to review and test out. All right guys, I'll bring it back in a little bit. I'm just starting to ramble. All right guys, ready to get the fire started. Uh, I was gonna do some shooting a little, a few minutes ago. Plenty of times I could have shot all day today because there was nobody out there but I was more concentrated on the hike and seeing and watching and experiencing that. <clears throat> so I went to search the area to see if I could do some shooting re relatively close. And of course, just recently, somebody came and parked and camping right over there. But I've got the pine fire tot out. Went ahead and prepped it a little bit. Got it cut open. Hopefully, you'll be able to tell. And uh, this is the first time I've used it, so hopefully... This will go relatively easy. I love these guys' products, so. Oh, starting to go there. There we go. Come on, stay with it, stay with it. Oh, it's starting to go. All right. So they keep falling off. You know what? There's always one fell safe. Alright guys. I apologize. I'm exhausted. I would keep trying to play with this more. If I had more energy. But. Let's just do this the old fashioned way. Now I guarantee if I probably cut it up a little more um, with the knife to expose a little more of it, that probably would have caught a little easier with the ferro rod. Uh, this is my first time using it, so everything's kind of an experiment when you're doing new stuff. Uh, but I'll let this catch on a little bit more, then I'll throw the, the little twigs on. Basically with a lighter, it does it really fast. And I'll tell you what, I love this guy's product. They are amazing. I can't remember what the burn time on this alone it would probably be, but I'm going to guess at a minimum, probably around the 10 minute mark. So it's going to be reliable. 
I'm pretty sure that I probably just should have cut it up a little more. So we'll chalk that up to user error. Obviously I have more of them. I also have a bunch more of his other products that I'm going to be testing out. <clears throat> because I have complete confidence in this guy's stuff. Everything he does is magical it seems like. But I guess if you're a firefighter, you come in, <laughs> become an expert not only in putting out fires, but also how to start them if you needed to. And so here we go, ladies and gentlemen. The beginning of another upside down fire. If you haven't tried an upside down fire, you need to. They are so little maintenance that it's just incredible. And depending on the size logs you pick, they can burn for a really good length of time. And that's why I have enjoyed it so much because it's literally so little work. Uh, it's completely worth it. I mean, I know there's a lot of ways of making fire and stuff like that, but this, this is my new favorite, and that's why you've been seeing it in the past few videos. All right, guys. If anything else exciting happens, I will bring you along. And if not, I will see you in the morning. Isn't that just beautiful? I love fire. I could watch it for days. So I'll let you watch it for a minute. See you in the morning. Or actually I may bring you back to show you the lights because they're pretty cool. All right, so in case you're curious what the little rope light looks like when you're in your hammock, I took a couple pictures of myself. There's the fire over here. Only one thing I will say about the upside down fire. Just kind of like correcting or collecting firewood, whatever you think you need to get it started, double or triple it, because that's probably what it's gonna take, Because a lot of people leave out the heat factor when they're talking about starting fire. Heat is a very important factor in starting a fire. So when you're trying to get it to burn down, you need that heat in order to get those bottom logs to ignite. So, but as far as this goes, this is what is really cool because you can sit in your hammock at night and read, hang out with friends. You know, you got plenty of light. If you want to open that up and hang it out around the campsite, you got various colors that you can use i just went with blue because that was what was on um but fantastic light definitely got to check it out i did a review of it just the other day got a link into it to where you can buy it check it out get it you'll love it kills the luminal kills it i'm telling you and in the meantime back to the fire because fires are cool let's go a little bit closer I could watch that for hours. And yes, of course, right now, as I'm sitting here, hopefully you can see me listen to some Guns N' Roses right now. This iPod is amazing. Well, I've had it for years. Years I've had this thing. It's the iPod Classic. Only has like 60 gigs, but you know what? It still rocks. It still works perfectly, and I still get to listen to my tunes. All right, guys, this may be the last one for the night because I've been really tired. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's been a struggle to stay up this late. Uh, this may be probably the earliest night ever for me out camping, but today just the heat was really high, and getting back, I mean, I was just exhausted. I, I can't, I don't have any other excuse. I was exhausted. So, Maybe an early night, so enjoy. Look at that fire behind me right now. That's what keeps me up at night. Not fear, not anything else. The beauty of fire. All right, guys. I'll see you in the morning. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is morning and I'm getting ready to start packing it up and heading home. Um, started raining pretty hard about 3.30 in the morning. <laughs> so I had to jump up and bring my stuff under here under the tarp <clears throat> that I had sitting out. Uh, but other than that, stayed really dry. Slept like a log last night. I mean, it was, I slept so hard. <laughs> I even went to bed fairly early for me. Um, but I tell you what, this hammock, super comfortable. I mean, I was so tired last night, I didn't even get the sleeping bag or my pillow out that I have. <clears throat> I just literally just knocked right out. Woke up when it started raining, got my stuff in, right back to sleep. And then started getting a little chilly this morning, uh, simply because I wasn't covered up by anything, just laying in the hammock. But definitely enjoyed it, had a great trip. Can't wait to get back out here again. Unfortunately, since <clears throat> buying and selling a house, I won't be doing it as much this summer, but I'm going to do it every chance I get, and I will bring you along every step of the way, and uh, yeah, oh, I haven't shown y'all my newest and favorite patch, that guy. Got it from Jasmine's Military Shop, she was kind enough to hunt one down for me and find it, and then uh, <laughs> and just gave it to me as a gift, which was really, really cool.